Greetings, everyone. It's Chuck Riffenberg at the Rogue Herbalist Academy and Apothecary here in Morrisville, Vermont. How are you this fine day? So I'm here with my friend Jeremy Thomas of Taurus Root Academy. And we're, uh, for the past year, really, we've been putting our philosophical brains together to try to uh, come up with some sort of uh, lesson plan for the uh, Astro Herbal Primer that you see in front of you here. Um, we're going to start doing a series called Materia Medica Mondays where we discuss uh, the astrological and herbal properties of various herbs and kind of the ideas behind them. But we wanted to do uh, a video to, you know, give the audience uh, a primer and understand some of the language uh, that we're using. Um, so what this video is going to be basically uh, Jeremy's going to walk us through and I'm going to ask questions and we're going to go back and forth. Um, what do you think, Jeremy? What, what would you like to say to start off with? Uh, well, welcome everybody. Uh, and thanks for having an interest in putting all this together because I think this is a fascinating course of study. But I think right off the bat, the idea of the language um, of the energetics is the importance that it applies to plants, planets, and people simultaneously and I think that's where kind of the, the power of understanding the language comes into play because it can be applied in different directions and, and every other sort of aspect of life but with what we're concerned with here in the Astro Herbal Program we're going to be talking about plants, planets, and people. Um, yeah and I think um, you know the, the beginning of it is sort of starting with the idea of unity and oneness and sort of working down the divisions of the many manifestations of life and elemental expressions and uh, we'll get into matching that with qualities of um, not only plants and their effects on the body but people as constitutional types and how plants affects those specific constitution types and how to get to know yourself better and the plants you're working with better and to be more Sort of conscious about the whole process. I think it's important if people don't have a background in any of the major herbal traditions um, to understand that like these different words are coming from different traditions but really they're describing the same principle at work and that's what kind of what we've uh, through our conversations uncovered um, because at first we were kind of going back and forth about you know, ether and chi, are these the same things or how are they similar? How are they different? Um, do you want to rehash any of that for the audience or do you want to give a description of the concept of th this unity principle, the ether? Yeah, I guess, you know, this is just from my own uh, perspective and my own subjective sort of take on it as, as it's sort of forced to be. Um, because I can't objectively analyze the ether or chi or prana with any test that I'm aware of yet. And... I guess the idea is that there is a unity, a oneness from which all life manifests. And I think different cultures have different words they use in their language to describe that unity. And ether, chi, and prana, and the, the quintessence seem to all be pointing at the same concept of this universal energetic substrate from which all three-dimensional life is created. This is the the sort of the, the energy of creation. And then everything else that happens down in the land of effects is a secondary. It's just reflecting attributes of this in various um, quantities and qualities of the attributes of the ether or chi, prana, quintessence, however you want to word it. But I think it's important to, you know, because, and I'm no expert in any of these, you know, any of this, but um, the principles are so similar. And so if you have a background in Ayurveda or Jyotish thinking and you understand the idea of prana, I think you have an, uh, a better way of sort of integrating all the rest of this information because it's a concept you're already familiar with. And the same thing, some people are sort of familiar with thinking about the ether, some people are familiar with thinking about chi. But from my perspective, I think they're all talking about the same principle which is this idea of an energetic substrate from which all other manifestation is created. Yeah, I think um, because I, w I originally had a sort of a understanding of ether as like like this, this I guess, space or the void or emptiness, but you kind of took umbrage with this description of the void, but it, I liked your description of 
the wave. Like it's what's waving. Is that what you said? Yeah, like science tends to um, analyze all energetic manifestation as, you know, they're analyzing these waves. But when you get into logic, it, a wave isn't a thing. A wave is what something does. So, so what is what is it that's waving? What are you observing there that's waving? Right. And from all I can gather, that's this so substrate th of the universe that is waving. Yes. And the ether, and chi, the prana, these things... They're moving through the physical substrate, and that's causing the wave. Is that the idea? Um, or am I not getting it? I guess this is getting back to the idea of the the pulse principle and the idea of what gave birth to anything in the first place. Science will talk about the idea of a big bang, but I think potentially there's little tiny big bangs inside of every single atomic yeah, field. Constantly. Constantly um, being repeated. And with that idea of a pulse, it's the pulse that's creating, you know, um, a ripple, a wave in the ether. It's a perturbation. The, the, the ether is a field, a stillness field by itself. The pulse creates a perturbation in that field, which creates the effects, the physical three-dimensional effects of time and space. You know, this, is, this, this, this unity is counterspatial and, and has no time element it's outside of time and space so it's really difficult to for anybody to think about I, I certainly have no like perfect picture in my head of what I imagine this to be but I think that I think that's a question that all philosophers throughout time yeah. have sort of been wrestling with it's what, a good place to start too and I think um, I don't know if you want to go down just to yin and yang and like the, the divergence into the duality or if you want to jump forward to because like they're in Ayurveda, Vata is air and ether sort of combined. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know if we go either way you'd like. Yeah, I, th the... I think maybe we'll work to there. I think we'll start with the yin and yang. Go from fair like, enough. You know, the idea of this, the idea of a pulse creating division in this unity. You know, because you're creating this this waveform that's got positive and negative attributes to it. Um, which is sort of the, the red shifting and blue shifting of light and all duality that comes from... Indeed, and that is the yin and yang. Right. Right out of... Yeah. And so this is... Uh, I think in our talks we tend to use the language of yin and yang when we're talking about polarity, but there's hundreds and thousands of different examples of polarity, positive, negative, masculine, feminine, extrovert, introvert... Hot on and cold. on, yeah, light and day, or day and night. Yeah, all all obvious direct oppositions are reflections of the yin and yang principle, the polarity principle. And you can see down below in the elemental too how it breaks apart, hot and cold, wet and dry, on and on. Yeah, yep, yep. And so uh, this next level is is a bit more. Um, it's probably less familiar for a lot of people, except for maybe people who are study Ayurveda, and you can see this Pitta, Kapha, and Vada associations, but it's the astrological principles of cardinal, fixed, and mutable. And so there, there are four of each of these, and so the, the astrological signs that begin the seasons are cardinal signs, and then the second sign of the season is a fixed sign, and the third sign of the season is mutable. So this is Aries... Taurus, Gemini, and on and on around the zodiac. Yeah, there's four each because there's four signs to each one of these categories. Yeah, so this is technically called a quadruplicity in astrology, which is counterintuitive and a little confusing because there's three of them, but there's four cardinal signs, there's four fixed signs, and there's four mutable signs to create the 12 signs of the zodiac. There we go. And now uh, the next level is the elements, which are called the triplicity which is counterintuitive again, because there's four of them, but there's three of each. There's three fire signs, three earth, three air, and three water, which is why it's called a triplicity. But there's relationships here. Now, I'll go back to the modalities of cardinal fixed immutable and the ideas of the principles. I think yin and yang probably doesn't need a whole lot of attention because people are familiar with the dynamics of that energy balance. But this is much less so. Cardinal is is very much yang 
It's very um, creative, outgoing, energetic, um, a doer, a mover, not, not a, um, a leader, very much an in- initiator of things, which is why it's related to the beginning of seasons. You were saying earlier it could be the sun and Saturn and Mercury, right? Yeah. Cardinal fixed mutable. I think, I think we, that's a little bit deeper in and that we'll, Fair enough. we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. But you'll see how these planets reflect these principles. It's all a relationship of principles, all of this is. Um, so the, like the fixed modality is kind of how it sounds. It's fixed, it's stubborn, it's sturdy, it's immovable, um, it's inertia at rest. It's like the structure, the physical structure, material. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the salt would be like right, the minerals of our bones, you know? Exactly. And so... Uh, or even, yeah... The whole body, really. Yeah, the physical structure of it. Mm. Um, and then the mutable quality is, again, how it sounds. It's, it's mutable, mutatable, changeable, adaptable. It's very um, fluid in its expression. And so the alchemical principles, sulfur, salt, and mercury, that's the old Western Hermetic um, alchemical terms for the same principles, uh, and then in Ayurveda, they use the, the terms pitta, kapha, and vada to describe constitution types. And so everybody's body has a certain constitution that they tend towards. And some are pretty balanced, and some are extremely pitta, and some are extremely kapha. Some kind of half and half here, and very little vada. Some's pretty equal of all three. So everybody's got kind of a different energetic constitution. And that gets into their astrological makeup combined with their diet and lifestyle, because there's a, there's a pitta diet and a pitta lifestyle, and there's a kapha diet and a kapha lifestyle. And so you can be born with one constitution, but live this whole other kind of a diet and lifestyle and change your natural constitution based on that. But becoming conscious of that also helps you become conscious of how, what kind of energy you're putting into your body to create balance or to create further imbalance. Um, Mercury being mind and like the uh, thinking part, you know, is yeah, this is like um, This could be like (laughs) Yeah, that's more of the again the planetary principle than necessarily the well But I think it maps on to Vada constitution as well because these people are very airy and they have uh, you know, maybe more prone to uh, anxiety or what have you than the other two although maybe not it depends because we're all a combination of all three just to what degree right and the the whole the mutable science you're going to find are all ruled by either mercury or jupiter which are the the planets of learning and so they're they're about intelligence mercury rules gemini and uh virgo and they're both very very analytical signs and then jupiter rules Sagittarius and Pisces, which are much more philosophical, but they're taking the information of that Mercury and um, applying it with meaning in the, the Jupiterian sense. But this Mercury is all about information and um, the intellect, as it were. Indeed. So I think the next, we'll get down to the elements here, and people tend to be at least somewhat familiar with the elements. Um, you know, fire. So fire and cardinal have a pretty similar um, aspect to them. They're both hot, uh, energetic, creative energies. They're both um, leaders, just a just a take charge kind of an energy. And then earth is also very similar to fixed. It's this very grounded, very practical, very do things with your hands kind of a um, very has to be tangible earth is a very tangible thing mm. this is this can fire is very spirited and then we get into air and air is air is very can be very theoretical and mental and just hold ideas whereas earth really needs to like how does it actually work um and then with the air air is very similar to mutable as we were just kind of discussing really the the whole idea of air being related to intelligence and um the mind and thinking and communicating are, are very major air qualities. It's all about information and relationships with air, uh, all types of relationships. This communication between things happens through the air. And then the mm-hmm. water element is 
the uh, where we get into the emotional realm and uh, yeah, that's uh, just the intuitive aspects are very much connected with water sensitivity on all levels, just our, our ability to sort of like be empathetic to the, the feelings of others is related to that water element. Um, and then, so you see, I have a five written here up by unity. So this five is relating to the idea of the quintessence. And so we have the four elements down here with ether slash chi prana or the quintessence being this fifth element. And this fifth element is related to tension and relaxation. And we'll kind of, now we'll get into the, the lower levels here of, you know, the energetics of hot, dry, cold is probably where it gets most tangible and relatable for humans and talking about sure their constitutions and their body types and how plants wouldn't affect it one way or the other um so like it's all this is very like taoist fire is a combination of hot and dry like it's it's not a Yes, it's a it's an esoteric principle fire, but on a very basic material level, it's it's a combination of heat and dryness. And earth is a combination of dry and cold. And then air is hot and wet, and water is wet and cold. And these principles of hot and dry and cold and wet um, are related to the same similar energetics. Hot is very active, very energetic, very dynamic. And dry, I think, I think my clearest way to describe hot and cold is hot is activates and cold is brings to rest. Mm. And then dry separates things and wet brings things together. I think is the, the most simplified way I can describe how those function energetically. But then I think um, besides those four qualities, I think the the qualities of tension and relaxation are sort of the main other duality within the human constitution to take into consideration when thinking about the human, the, the people, but also the plants and how they're affecting a human's tension or relaxation state, be it mental or physical. This is some Matthew Wood stuff as well. He talks about tension and relaxation and yeah, that's probably where this originally got into my head through Sage of Popham. And yeah, I mean, they're older ideas than that, really. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at with this. you have any other... No, I think uh, for anybody that's viewing that um, these are new concepts for, I mean, you can just think about how it applies to your own constitution. And, like, people don't even... People aren't in contact with their bodies anymore, like... You know, think about what's a hot, dry condition, like somebody with like psoriasis or some sort of eczema situation, real dry, itchy, hot, yeah. sort of inflamed skin issues. Or uh, maybe somebody's more on the cold and damp side and they are very boggy tissue, you know, depressed kind of tissue state or uh, like, you know, mucous membranes are full and, you know, bogginess. Think about a bog, like think about how we see these energies reflected in the natural environment and how they're analogous in the human body you know as above so below these whole this whole set of ideas yeah and i think and then also maybe while we're kind of talking about this we can kind of relate pitta kapha and vada because i think a lot of people are at least somewhat familiar with those concepts but we can kind of relate that to these same elements of pitta being a hot and moist um energy but the the moist tend to being related to the the oil yeah you'll, you'll see it like uh fire and water sometimes but it's like yeah heat and like oiliness like yeah fluid in that sense of like like think of somebody that's really you know big ruddy face like they're they're sweaty and oily and full of fire yeah yeah and then the cough of constitution tends to that it's the the cold and wet it tends to hold on to things and um, be very slow and sluggish and potentially depressed tissue states of yeah. Um, um, Larger build sometimes yeah. people have or yeah, I think um, 
we could get into body types and stuff in another video and how, you know, more energetic and constitutional stuff for sure. Yeah, but I guess we'll just, we'll quick to relate these to these words. I think yeah. Vada being, um, uh, what is Vada? The air and ether. The air and the ether, that's right. So that's taking, it's, it's that whole idea. One, I guess one last thing I'd like to say about this whole idea of unity and ether and chi is to me, this is all about information. Mm. And then this is the formation based on the information. And this again, this whole idea of being counter-spatial, uh, a great analogy brought into my head of what that means to have, for information to be counter-spatial is to take a laptop and it's full of information and it weighs a certain amount, but if you erase all of the information off the laptop, it's still going to weigh the exact same amount. Right. The information doesn't carry any space in and of itself. And I think that's... Um, kind of an interesting thing to think about because it, it all derives from the mind. Everything else derives from the mind and the idea of air yeah, being connected back to the ether and vata being connected back to the ether is... Um, like you said, communication through the air, like you can hear, you know, somebody's voice through the air, travels in the airwaves. Right. Then chi, like if you're doing chi gum, like that's breath work, you know, right. and so is prana means breath, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so that right there. Good stuff. Yeah. So um, and then let's just uh, we'll do a quick flip on the other side. And I think this simplifies a little bit. We'll just kind of uh, add just a hair of this hair onto this. So we have the same idea of ether coming down into the yang and yin. And um, the yang, we've got the fire and the air. And the yin, we've got the earth and the water and the hot and dry and what we were talking about with the the um the modalities we were talking about the pitta kapha and vada of ayurveda in the western herbal tradition they tend to use the, the four elements as the basis of constitution types and so mm -hmm. they had the terms choleric sanguine melancholy and phlegmatic to describe constitution types but again it's going to these same principles of hot and dry and hot and wet as far as you know what are the the qualities that create those conditions that you would call a choleric condition or a sanguine condition and then as we take this the next step further into the astrology of it like he was kind of saying before you can start relating planets into some of these energetic principles because the planets are really the the ultimate pulse points of creation everything is the, the the planets are the movers and the shakers all of this stuff is the elements through which they're trying to work and operate um, but ideally the sun is a hot and dry planet mars is a hot and dry planet uranus is a hot and dry planet meaning their influence on earth is to heat it up and dry it out that's what their influence does jupiter is on the other hand is hot and wet so it's bringing moisture and heat together. Um, Mercury being tied to the ether principle. Mercury is sort of the, the asexual planet. It's, it's the, uh, the genderless planet, as it were. And it's connected to the ether principle. But it's also got a relationship to air. And information, as we were kind of looking at in the last one, with Ver Mercury and Vata being related. Um, and now Saturn is you know the earth the cold and dry principle but saturn is also connected to the ether there's a there's a relationship between ether and saturn and that's that's there's a probably gigantic esoteric rabbit hole to go down in that connection that maybe we'll get to somewhere else but um well and real quick we were talking about in chinese medicine how the metal element is in sometimes associated with air and the planet saturn you right. know so we can see the air Saturn crossover there. Yeah, there's because Saturn's very connected to Vata too. Mm. And so this Mercury, Saturn, air, Vata, ether connection, there's um, some of this all isn't exactly cut and dry. Like these three are all choleric and they're all hot and dry, but the sun is hotter and not as dry. Mars isn't as hot, but it's super dry. Uranus is even less hot, but even drier. 
So there's various qualities, quantities of heat and dryness to these planets too. And the same, now we'll get over here, the Moon, Venus, and Neptune, it's, they're the, the water, the cold, wet um, planets. And so all three of those are going to bring coldness and moisture into the system, but at different levels of each cold, and some are going to be more wet, some are going to be more cold, like this is going to bring a lot of moisture in. Um, and yeah, I think that's the, I guess the, the beginning of the intro into all of this. The planets are important because those are going to become things that we're going to start relating herbs to and giving, you know, planetary correlations to herbs. Or we're going to at least try to think about that. We're going to think about herbs in the Materia Medica Monday series at, on an individual level, on an energetic basis. And you know, be describing how that relates into all of these other energetic principles so that in the end what all this boils down to is if you can begin to work with your um, natal chart the astrology can be an incredibly empowering tool to um, ideally herbalism can be used preventatively and if you can recognize aspects of your chart which are very imbalanced you can create that balance before that imbalance causes your system dysfunction yes so i think the the real goal in all of this is to become conscious of the the language and how it applies to you as a person and where you're where you have excess and where you have deficiency as far as balance with all of these energies and when you see, as we get in further, we'll, we'll recognize, like we are talking about, air is connected with information, and, you know, earth is going to be connected to, like, your diet, what are you physically putting in your body, and water is, like, your emotions, how are you taking care of your feelings and your emotional life as far as your health and fires activity, are you getting some exercise, are you doing anything, are you, are you speaking your mind, are you, or fear is, like, the destroyer of fire, mm. and so... There are all these different things that can squash our ability to express any of these elements. And the more we kind of get to know our own selves and think about our own selves in these different elements, it gets easier to be honest with ourselves maybe about where we do have excesses and where we might have um, some lack and where we might be able to work on either ourselves with our own sort of mental process of dealing with life, but also with... Um, the herbs we're choosing to use in order to create balance and health and vitality in general. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Yeah, thank you. If you want to support the more of these videos, uh, you can check out rogueherbalist.com. Uh, use the coupon code TAURUSROOT and you get 10% off. That would be appreciated. Check us out again. Thanks, guys. Take care.